The elves loosed a volley of arrows at full gallop. A couple rattled off the bones of the undead horses, but none struck the riders. Cardell replied with a shot from his heavy crossbow. It struck deep into the thigh of one of the elves, who winced but kept riding. Dern's glide wings swooped low above the charging Valinar, but the horses ignored it, trained for war. They would not spook so easily. As the winged reptile pulled up into a sharp turn, Dern reached behind him into a saddlebag. Brager had finally loaded his crossbow and loosed a bolt at the Valinar leader, but it glanced off his mailed shoulder. The elves stowed their bows in back holsters and drew the distinctive Valinar double scimitars. Their leader held a slim and deadly-looking rapier straight forward from his shoulder as he gave his war cry. A few yards before impact, Dern's glide wing swooped low over the elves once more. The halfling had one hand on the reins, and a bola spun on the other. The glide wing banked sharply as Dern flung the bola, entangling the legs of one of the Valinar horses. It crashed to the ground, pitching its rider from the saddle. The Elves of Valinor, as well as the other Ternadal of Ernal, are known around the world as elite cavalry forces, some of the best horseback fighters in the world. In this episode of the Library of Kornberg, we're going to be diving into one specific aspect of the Valinor, their animals. But let's start with an overview of the Ternadal as a people to give ourselves a baseline. Before we do, I do want to mention I have done my best to ensure that all of the material I do cover is purely based on Eberron canon material. But there are a few places in this video where two different sources directly conflict, and in those cases I will either call that out and talk about it, or put a footnote on screen explaining that. Okay, on to the Valinar and their animals. There are two general cultures of elves that live on the islands of Arenal. The larger Areni culture, who venerates and preserve their ancestors using positive energy necromancy, and the Ternadal, who live mostly in the northern steppes of the Arenal Islands. The Ternadal also revere their ancestors, but instead of trying to physically preserve them, they instead preserve their spirits by attempting to emulate the stories of their lifetime through doing similar great deeds. There are three main factions within the Ternadal, divided based on which legendary era of elven ancestors they emulate. The Silaeus Tern call back to the earliest elven heroes who fought for elven freedom against the giants and led the elves to their home in Aranal. The Dralius Tern are elves whose patron ancestor was involved with fighting against the dragons of Arganesson, protecting Aranal, and the largest group is the Valais Tern. They re reproduced the actions of their ancestors who crossed the Dragon Reach Sea and began to conquer Corvair. A fourth group, the Sial Moraine, are a druidic order within the Terranidal who work and fight alongside the Valais Tern and other subgroups, but we will talk more about these druids later. The Valais Tern are both the largest and best known group of the Ternadal in Corvair, due to a few relatively recent events. Known for their fighting skill, most notably their cavalry, large numbers of them were hired as mercenaries to fight in the last war, especially by Syri. Once enough of these elves were in Corvair, they betrayed their employers and conquered a swath of the lands of Syri in the southeast of the nation as a way of emulating their ancestors who conquered the same region from the Dakan Empire millennia ago. This became the new nation of Valinar. So, well, technically the other Ternadal, the Silaeus and Dralius Tern, also have the same relationship with these special animals. For ease, 
and as it's what most people from the Five Nations would call them, we'll simply call them Valinar animals from here. The iconic image of a Valinar elf is a warrior bearing down upon you with their glimmering double-bladed scimitar in the air and the dust of the blade desert being kicked up by their mighty war horse. This image is well-founded. The Valinar have the strongest and fastest cavalry force on the continent. A large part of that is they just have better steeds than other forces in Corvair. Their animals, especially their horses, are smarter, stronger, and faster on average than regular animals. There are good reasons for this. Many of them are touched by ancient magics, and while the horses are the most commonly seen, other animals paired with the Valinar are equally formidable. Let's start with their origins to understand these beasts. The Elves of Eberron are descended from the Elves who rebelled against their former masters, the Giants of Zendrik. One phase of the rebellion saw Elven Druids use the Wild Shape ability to turn into animal forms to support the fight, many taking the form of horses so the great rangers and fighters of the precursors of the Terranodile could ride quickly into battle, others turned into other animals like hawks to scout, as well as other animals in different support roles. Then, at one point in the fight, the giants cursed those druids. Some sources name the originator of the courses Kalsir, the Empyrean Emperor of the empire named after himself, the Kalsir Empire. Other sources just say it was a powerful giant wizard of the Sulat League. Either way, the curse trapped the druids permanently in their animal forms. The remaining elven druids protected these animals, seeing them as heroes, just as much as the other warriors that fought against the giants. So, they were brought along on the exodus of elves from Zendrik over to their new homeland in Arenal. The Terranidal's remaining druids evolved over time into the Sayal Moraine, which translates to Horse Watchers. Though they are involved with protecting all of the Valinar animals, the horses are just the most outwardly visible results of their care. Terranidal elves who emulate an ancestral spirit of a great druid know the importance of these animals being able to emulate their own ancestors, and are just as willing to protect their lives as a Valinar warrior would protect the life of an elven companion in their warband. Likewise, even non-Druidic Ternadal feel the same about any non-Valinar animal that is part of their warband. The descendants of these heroic animals were given their own lands in Arenal, and the Druids closely protect those lands, making sure no outsiders can gain access as their locations are kept secret. The exact location or locations of the Sayal Moraine protected grounds are not known to outsiders at all. But what is known is that they are somewhere in the northern steppes controlled by the Ternadal and connected to manifest zones to Irian. Food in those areas is plentiful and healthy, and there is room for the animals to run and enjoy themselves. The druids will heal injured animals and regularly use the Speak with Animal spell and also Wild Shape into beasts to allow the animals to interact with their guardians more directly. The druids and other warriors of the Seal Moraine commune with ancestral spirits to divine when any of the animals might be ready for awakening to the touch of the spirit of the ancestors, and guide the animals through rituals to do that. Once awakened, a Valinar animal has human average levels of intelligence or higher, and can understand speech. At that point, they may choose to bond with a partner, most often a Terranidal elf, but occasionally their patron ancestor spirit may point them in another direction like an outsider. Any bonded elf will see them as a sibling striving towards the same destiny and guided by connected ancestors. And once bonded, an animal and its partner will stay together for decades as Valinar animals have a much extended lifespan beyond normal beasts of the same variety. 
The horses of the Valinar are especially well known for their intelligence, speed, and endurance, and other superlative qualities all over Corvair. House Vidalis, who themselves are known for their magically aided animal breeding programs and superior mage bred horses, see Valinar steeds as a new source of superior genetic material that can be mixed in with their mage bred horses to improve them further. The acquisition of breeding stallions and mares is something House Vidalis will pay handsomely for. There have been a few daring attempts that have failed, including a big raid. However, the house did almost get their hands on an entire herd of horses back in 978 YK, which was 20 years ago, but this attempt ended in failure as well. So at this point, because of those incidents, House Vidalis is fully banned from entering Valinar in its entirety as a way to help protect the animals. On a small scale, Vidalis has gotten their hands on a few Valinar animals, but so far their attempts at breeding them have completely come up as a failure, and they don't know exactly why, if they're missing ri special rituals, or need the manifest zones that they grow up in, or what exactly to actually get them to breed. Of course, the magic and intelligence of a bonded steed, or other Valinar animal, means House Vidalis won't ever achieve their aim. Valinar animals have abilities beyond what the majority of Corvair knows, which we can look at now. And also, we'll look at how Valinar animals have evolved in both appearance and abilities as the additions roll by. Valinar steeds were first mentioned in the Genesis, in the Eberron campaign setting, though not much is said about them, just that the Valinar are renowned horse breeders, and the steeds themselves are fast and beautiful. Statistics are given for just the Valinar riding horse, and it is made clear that these riding horses are bought and sold to outsiders. But the other variety of horses, the war horses, are not sold under any circumstance. Here's the stat block of the riding horse. And just as a point of comparison, let's bring on the stats for a regular light horse too. So as you can see, the Valinar horse was just set as a quicker version of the regular horse, just being 20 feet per round faster with a dexterity score too higher. Plus, it does have that ridiculously high jump skill. The Valnar Riding Horse was listed as being able to be purchased for 500 gold Galifar pieces. How much is that actually compared to the game economy? Well, with the standard light riding horse falling in at 75 gold pieces, and a draft horse at 200 Galifars, most standard weapons ranged up to about 25 gold, with Masterworks versions costing 300 more, and a basic plus one magic weapon being 2,000 gold Galifars again on top. Regular armors ranged from 5 to 250 Galifars, with the exception of half and full plate being 600 and 1,500 Galifars respectively, with another 150 gold added for Masterwork and 1,000 gold additional for any plus one magical variants of the armor. So the Valinar Riding Horse is not exactly inexpensive, but compared to reasonably common magic items, it, it actually pales in comparison in cost. As for how the horses looked, the riding horse was described in the campaign setting as this. This fine horse is majestically tall and deservedly proud. Its lush coat is white on its belly, tan on the back, and dark brown on the sides, almost suggesting the coloration of an antelope. So physically, including its coloration, it just looks like a strong, healthy horse.
The next few books don't expand upon this much, though a little over a year after the campaign setting came out, there was an article on Druids on the Wizards of the Coast website, which both covered the Sayal Moraine and the Valinar Warhorses specifically, among other topics. It covered the theft attempts by House of Dallas I mentioned earlier, and their failed breeding attempts on stolen horses in greatest detail up through now, though small details have also appeared elsewhere. Counter to this article, later books like the 3.5 edition Player's Guide to Eberron mentions that riding horses and even the war horses are gelded before they are taken out of the breeding ground. This contradicts the information in the Dragon Shards article and is likely due to Keith Baker, the writer of the Dragon Shards article, and the writer of the section in the Player's Guide, not knowing that the other was writing about Valinor horses. As the article only published a few months before the book was released, and I would venture the publishing turnaround of the web article is much faster than the book. Unfortunately, the editors did not catch the contradiction. Back to the Valinor War Horses. So I have the stats recreated from the article on screen. As you can see, pretty much every single stat is upgraded from the Valinar Riding Horse. And bringing on the regular Heavy War Horse from 3.5 as well, you can see it is upgraded in most ways, other than the damage die on its hoof attacks. Plus, it gets some bonuses to make it easier to ride, and Druids may get it as an animal companion. For reference, the Heavy War Horse was 400 gold, and Valinar War Horses, as I mentioned earlier, are priceless and unable to be purchased. One thing you might notice, comparing these stat blocks to the description I gave earlier in the video, is that both the riding and warhorse variants of the Valinar Steeds are decidedly unmagical, and only had an intelligence of two, like most other animals. They really were just horses that were faster, with better stats. And there was very little mention of any other animals that the Valinar made use of. Another thing I find interesting is that the monetary scale doesn't really match up at all compared to even inconsequential magic items that should be less valuable than these horses based on the in-world story. In 4th edition, there was an updated Valinar riding horse in the Eberron campaign guide, so let's take a look at those stats too. So obviously, the way stat blocks were communicated is completely different from 3.5 and the game rules are not completely consistent between editions, except for in a couple places. So let's compare those. So one of those comparable ones is speed. So at first we see that the speed is 10, which is the number of squares the creature can move in one turn. So the equivalent of a 50 foot movement in 3.5 or fifth edition. So, of course, is a little bit slower than the 3.5 version. The ability scores are also somewhat equivalent for the most part. They stuck around the same scores with a little bit of deviation. To look at a comparison, the regular riding horse has quite different stats overall, though the same speed. If not for the swift speed and nimble beast abilities, the Valinar horse's reputation for quickness would not be maintained. You will notice that there is nothing particularly magical about the Valinar horse yet again, though its origin is now Fey, hinting at how it will evolve in the future. As for costs, a Valinar riding horse costs 360 Galifars, a standard riding horse in comparison was 75 gold only, and a standard war horse doubles that cost up to 680 gold pieces. 
Now, the cost of 360 gold pieces matches up exactly as a level 1 magic item. And 680 is the same as a level 3 magic item. So that gives you an idea of where it was thought that these mounts fell on the power scale of the game. 4th edition did not have full stats for a Valinar Warhorse published, but there is a short statement on how to construct them. Let's quote it verbatim. These steeds have the statistics of a standard Warhorse, but with a speed of 12. That's it. On screen is a reconstruction of what that would look like, and I changed the type as well, as that likely would have been done if they had actually shown the stats. Again, no pricing was available for war horses as in the game, they were still considered priceless, but I would venture that they would be the equivalents of a fourth level magic item. These two horses are again the only Valinar animal stats available in 4th edition, as the other types didn't show up until 5th edition. For 5e, let's start with the steed again. Notice immediately that even the image for the Valinar steed has them as a more unnatural color than anything I showed you for the previous Valinar horses. They're just more magical at first glance. Pulling up the actual stats, you will see that the steed is still a fey creature, but is actually much slower than either the riding or war horses from the previous two editions. Though the stats are remarkably similar to the previous iterations, except that the intelligence has dramatically increased. And comparing to the regular 5th edition riding horse from the monster manual, the stats are higher in general across the board. Despite the speed loss, this is a special horse. That I can see going out of my way to protect and to keep out of the hands of House Vidalis. This steed and the other animals I will cover in a moment get one additional ability not currently included in the stat block, an ancestral trait from this table of abilities. From that table, the steeds can regain part of their legendary speed or one of these other interesting magical abilities. The Valinar Hawk is new to 5th edition, of course, other than the briefest of mentions in 3.5, but this Hawk is indeed quite a skilled scout as a companion based on its keen sight ability and high wisdom score. As you can see, it beats out a standard Hawk on every front except for the base speeds, which are the same. Likewise, the Valinar Hound is new to the game. Comparing it to the dog that is core to D&D 5th edition, the Mastiff, every stat is upgraded. And while the other two animals that have been statted out have a clear role in an adventuring party as a mount and a scout respectively, the Hound doesn't really. Though who doesn't love a good boy like this great glowing doggo? And personally, I love the idea of a dog with the lie detector ancestral trait. The text mentions that other Valinar animals exist as well, so I'd personally like to see some more at some point. One thing you may feel the need to do personally is reconcile a lot of the older lore about Valinor horses especially with this new paradigm that was set up in Rising from the Last War. Where are all of these riding horses that are fit to be bought and sold that are mentioned all through the 3.5 and 4th edition lore and novels? How is it acceptable if Valinor steeds are fully intelligent, cogent creatures? One idea is that the breeding grounds in Aranol produce a lot of animals, and not all of them have the full spark of the ancient druids. So 
They don't have the intelligence or special abilities of the fey animals that we've seen, and no ability to ever gain them. These horses would be the ones that make up the majority of the herds of animals that they use in Valinor itself, so they're willing to buy and sell them. I haven't really thought through this idea fully, but it might be a way to not have to drop that bit of old lore. Or perhaps you just want the horses that are acceptably to be sold to be mundane horses, with good genetic stock and slightly faster than the normal horses, but they're completely unrelated to the mystical versions of the animals. If you go that route, the awakened animals might even take on an active role in rearing of the mundane animals as well. That's completely up to you. So let's close the book on Valinor animals for this Kornberg library. Their lore and stats have changed greatly from Eberron's inception to now. And I believe there is a lot more room for expansion as more is written for 5th edition. I hope you found some inspiration in this video for future characters, or maybe a story arc in an Eberron campaign that you are running. Also, if I've missed something, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments, and I can add a correction to the description or explain it in a response. For the next video, after a short holiday break, we're going to be unearthing a new type of Eberron Collector video, where I will cover a specific Eberron hardcover, starting with Magic of Eberron. I'm going to cover the material that is within, and review it on how well it can be used with the current edition of D&D. Please subscribe so you don't miss it here on Eberron Archaeologist. Thanks for watching.